What's going on, Base Gorilla fam? It is Godlike here again with another really quick tutorial. Um, again, starting with this weird ass blank template that I have. Um, what we're actually going to do today is I'm going to show you a preview. No, it's not going to be a preview. Um, what I'm going to show you guys is actually going to be a project that I'm working on. We're calling it a super collab. It's myself, uh, Anxire, Vinny Vast, and Glico. We're working on a track together, so we're going to mix it. Not master. We're going to mix it today. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that inside of Ableton. If you are working with stems, this will be a quick way to show you guys how to import them and get all that stuff to look in the way it needs to. Um, so first off, you need to know exactly what BPM you're starting at. So luckily, I already know um, we're starting at 150. So 150 up here in the corner. Because this is a blank template, you guys should already know this by now. Uh, it's already set up for me to do my thing as far as production because we're not producing anything today. We're just mixing. I'm just going to create a blank audio track and delete all that shit. Bye bye. All right, cool. So now that we got that figured out, um, I'm going to go over here. Look at my super collab. We're going to grab all of these. I'm going to grab everything, everything but the master because I don't I don't need that. Um, that's them showing me what it's supposed to sound like. We're going to find out on our own. So drag this over into Ableton. For those of you who like quick keys and want to know this kind of stuff, if you hold command while you drag over all these files, it will line them up for you. It's going to line them up vertically. That way they all line up on the whichever mark you start at. So one for me. Come on. Yeah. Smooth. All right, cool. So now that we got that in there, um, ideally we're going to be able to click all of these. If you click on the left part of this bottom window over here, it's going to show you all of them as far as like the way that they're being processed, the different warp modes, that kind of stuff. Um, because I know that all these are going to be at the same tempo, I don't need to warp them. I'm just going to unclick that. And with some movie magic, we're going to go backwards and move all of these beginning time marks. I know that there's a proper name for that. I personally don't know what it is. We're going to move all of these back. Movie magic, ready to go. Get out of here, Red Bull. I want my Taco Bell. Give me them beefy five layers, son. Oh, sweet. Nice. All right. Hit the end of it. There you guys go. Movie magic. You saw all of that in fast time, I hope. If not, then that was a really lame cutscene for you guys. Anyways, um, the point of that was to get all of those to start at zero because they're all stems they were all exported from the same DAW so I know that they're gonna play from zero so if we hit play now it would work I'm not gonna do that why I'm not gonna do that is because a, I already know that I'm trying to mix this so I'm trying to bring the, the volumes to a relatively homogeneous level which never happens with stems like these so for me I, I mean just precautionarily I'm just gonna highlight all of them and bring all of them down 6 dB Fun fact, humans hear changes relative at 3 dB. So, I mean, obviously the digital to actual RMS level doesn't translate right, but if you do minus 6 over here, it's relative minus 6 dB in actual life, which means it's twice as quiet. Um, the goal with that is to make sure that we can still hear everything in the relative volumes that they were when I got the mix. But now I have a little bit more control of my dynamics as far as what I want to turn up. I can turn up what I want to turn down. I can turn down and I'm not going to hit any of that uh, digital zero. So now that we got that figured out, let's, oh, well, now we got to hear it. Let's hear this track. Sweet. I already know because it's bass music, because it's heavy in those types of uh more big bassy big drummy type stuff i'm going to turn the drums up bring those back up a little bit if i can find a sub maybe an 808 channel i know that i can bring that up too oh there it is hello all the way at the end sweet so i'm gonna bring that up i don't see anything in here oh there it is that's really quiet we can leave that there since we're gonna leave there okay uh, I know I'm not explaining this to you guys as I'm doing it, but I'm actually looking at these uh, titles right here. Very helpful, especially when importing and when people send you stems like this, because for the most part, they're going to be labeled. If not, how dare you? 
Um, but on some real shit, label your guys' stuff, especially if you send somebody a project, a collab, what have you, label it because it makes this part significantly easier. Imagine if we had to go through this and they all just said audio one, audio two, like they do on this side. It'd be terrible. So I'm getting my volumes relative because I know what I'm going to need. I know that these ones that say chamber and room, these are going to be reverb uh, returns from FL, from Logic. Um, these guys work in a couple different platforms, so I know that I have to work with that as well. Bring these down a little bit. Glico synth, we're going to leave that. All of the main synths, all the big, you know, drop parts, we're going to leave intact. That way everything stays relative. I'm bringing back all the arp the arpeggios, all the vocal, uh, like the orchestral stuff of this. Um, not that it's not important, but the goal is to bring out the main melodic content while you're mixing. And in this case, it's going to be the synths um, in the main driving rhythm, which is going to be the drums. So bring those out, bring everything back into the mix so that um, you can maintain your listener's focus as far as what they are, what they're looking, what they're listening for. More of the synth. Again, we can turn this down. And I know a lot of this, uh, literally this entire thing we're doing blind, but with it being labeled properly, you know, we already went over this. We, we know exactly what we're, relatively what we're working with. Nice. Okay, so now that everything is relative, all of our levels are homogenized as far as we know where everything is sitting. We want the synths to be a little bit on top of the drums, which are going to be obviously stomping on top of everything else. The, or the orchestra, the, all the little bits and pieces, um, they're there. They're loud enough that you can hear them, that your ear is catching them, but it's not drawn away from the melody. That's what we're trying to keep in, in perspective here. So now that we got all that figured out, we are going to level it out a little bit, bring all this to a relative volume, and then we're going to, I mean, we're essentially going to master it. So from here, glue compressor, you guys already know it's good. Um, we're going to leave this at a relatively low or relatively mild attack, not really fast, not really slow, just right in the middle um, because most of this was already done. Most of the mix is already relative the way we want it to, we're just going to bring it all back into in the perspective. Minus three, minus five uh, dB on the, on the gain reduction over here is what we're looking for. That was perfect. All right, for those of you guys who missed last week's episode, what we're doing over here is we are doing our relative uh, imaging as well as uh, kind of taming that low end, making sure that everything on the sides is cut out. Everything on the mids is going to be right where it needs to as far as kicking out the, the low end of the kick while not bringing out too much of that sub muddiness to it. Um, so now that we got that nice and figured out, I'm really liking the way this is sounding. I'm just going to add a little bit of vinyl distortion to bring out the harmonics just a little bit. Not even like a lot. We're going to bring this down immediately. Sweet. I already like it. I'm, I'm pumped. I like where that's going to be sitting at. Yes, it's leaving a little bit of ground noise, but I want that. Um, same thing with the relative volumes up here in this multiband dynamics. Um, if you guys missed last week, the goal is to keep these crossovers relative to what we did with the EQ. And then that is honestly going to provide us with the cleanest translation between big subs and listening to it on a, on a laptop or something like that.
a little bit bigger of a bass song so we can bring out the sub. It's not gonna be too big of a worry. One more glue compressor, hold this whole thing over. And the limiter, because we're for sure gonna hit this bit as hard as we can. Sweet. So obviously there's a ton of different uh, spectral meters, uh, a ton of different ways for you guys to analyze exactly how, uh, how much volume you're getting. Um, but for me, one of the simplest ways for me to keep track of this is literally just watching over here. Um, so my goal right now is going to be to get between 3 and 4 dB RMS. We'll see how close we can get without destroying this. <laughs> Nice. And because it is a little bit heavier of a track, we can kind of hit this hit this multiband dynamics a little bit harder than we did in the last episode, just because um, the the harmonics are the harmonics um, that this uh, compressor are actually going to bring out are actually going to be really nice and pleasant with this type of bass. That Reese bass, it's going to be really lush. Um, if we would have done that with the vocals, it would have just sounded like like somebody yelling on speakerphone through a radio like it's just not the sound that you want um, but we are able to tame it a little bit more I had to turn this off because it's producing some really really unpleasant ground noise but I like it I like it in the mix I don't like it when it's quiet so we're gonna turn it on while it's mixing and see if we like where we're at <laughs> Nice. I don't like it when it's on its own, but I like it in the mix. And that's what you guys are going to learn about this kind of stuff is on its own. It's probably not going to sound good on its own. The techniques probably won't translate to everything. But when you put all of this in context and you understand how to use it properly, this stuff is really, really powerful. So I want to thank Bass Gorillas. I want to thank Ableton. I'm going to thank this vinyl distortion for ruining my outro. But thanks, you guys, for tuning in. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Like like always, we're just going to end this by playing out the track one last time.